Welcome to Holocron Transmissions. I'm your host, Nick. This is Patrick. And also we have Omidon. Well, you want to say hello, guys? Hello. Yo. So today we'll be reviewing a brand new episode for Star Wars Rebels Season 3, Episode 15, called Trials of a Dark Saber. Now, of course, for me, I love this episode. This was a bang on 10 out of 10. Dave Filoni did a great job on this episode. And I just love all his work. So, Patrick, on to you. Uh, I thought this was a good episode. Uh, I have my problems, though, with some stuff with it that makes me not truly love it. And we'll get into that later. But other than that, though, I thought it was a good episode leading up to the next episode that we're going to be seeing here soon. Are we going? I give this a 10 out of 10. This is a very good character-driven episode and really shows the camaraderie of characters and that uh, every one of them has like uh, certain things that really make them unique and why why they are where they are. Very true. So first off, uh, that starts off with, at Chopper Base, of course, we get to see Finn, I believe his name is Finn Rell or someone else. The guy in the blue armor. Um, I believe it's Finral, the the Mandalorian. Yes. Yeah, I believe it's Finral. All right, cool. So basically, he walks onto the ghost ship and basically talks to Kanan about the you know legend of the dark saber. And what is kind of cool is that it wasn't Pre Fisla who first owned it. It was Tav Fisla. The first, right. the first Mandalorian to ever be a Jedi. Mm -hmm. It was a very interesting thing to have in the lore here to put in of the Dark Saber. And plus, too, what I really liked about this how it, they actually put the painting on the wall on how you know he managed to build the lightsaber, and also how we get to see the Mandalorians. You know, whoever has control of the Dark Saber takes control of all the Mandalorians. Yes, and the, so, the that we saw yeah. too are definitely a great reminder of the old Republic era. Yes, the it, it's sort it's sort of like a, a feels like a way of saying this is the new Mandalore type of thing. Mm -hmm. For those of you who, who know, Mandalore is basically a title for the one who rule who rules the Mandalorians. And may I say, what what I thought was so interesting about the pic uh, the. The picture, uh, the picture animation showing the history, is it was very reminiscent of the two D Clone Wars show from back in the early two thousands, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. when Anakin's going through the cave there and seeing that he will become Vader. Yeah, it's very reminiscent of that, and I thought it was really interesting. I agree. I agree too. So we have Sabine here, and we we get to see her room for the second time in Star Wars Rebels. I mean, we haven't seen her room since season one, I believe. Yes, yes. No, we've seen it periodically in season two and three. Yeah, but Just not like a focus on it though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really like as well how we get to see like these different type of arts that it shows how artistic Sabine is really is. As well as Thrawn, because it kind of leads to Thrawn, and in a way, because he likes art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As well as Sabine, so, too. Something I also love is if you look at the room, it there's there's uh, it's progressed to more and more, and you also see sort of like a lightening of the tone of her artwork in her room, especially when you saw like that group picture she had. It's it's sort of like it's a very friendly feeling picture, like. This is her family now, and I thought it, it speaks more of how the character is like was sort of like uh, uh, things things are more of like towards about the galaxy and such. There's a very harshness to a more like mythic feel, but when when it comes to them, it's more of like that chibi, very cuddly type of thing. Also, if anybody caught it, if you look at her left shoulder plate, she has the out the owl creature there. Uh, as a symbol on it, which I thought was a was a neat uh, a neat little thing. Sort of, it sort of makes me think that like that uh, the Ahsoka Tano in some way is just is guiding her. Mm -hmm. 
or at least or at least the bendu because he also was seen in the presence of those yeah it, now that's one of my things here that i ha i have not a big problem with but I, oh why do you do that like um it showed the bendu in this episode and I thought, oh, hey, maybe he's going to give a vice to Sabine or something. That'd be kind of cool. Or it might show up and Sabine will learn something about the Force more. Nope. Hmm. Not going to do anything with him. Oh, let's show him. Do nothing. There's no point in showing him then whatsoever. I don't I'm... understand why they showed him. Don't understand why they got him up for him to do absolutely nothing. That was so stupid in my opinion. I mean, it kind of leaves us in a speculation on what, you know, a feist did Ben to actually give Sabine if, you know, off camera a feist to make He didn't give nothing! He just well, saw it with him! Well, That's it! Thing. Well, here's the thing. He, we didn't see her for hours until she came back to... Okay, to the here's the thing then. Show a little bit of why she's gone then. If the Bendu did talk to her, say... You know, show the first beginnings of it. We don't have to see the ending of it and show the beginning of it because how, when she came back to the thing, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but when she came back to the thing, though, uh, how she trained, how she fight, um, uh, oof, I'm forgetting the main character's name now. <laughs> uh, not Ezra, but. Kanan? Kanan, thank you. But how she fight Kanan, though, it was the same as before, you know? Just. He, Kanan had to get her more aggressive, and that's my other problem I have, but we'll go into it later. So, basically, to me, it's like, oh, she didn't learn anything. If she did talk to the Bandu, then she would have learned something. But no. So, still, no point in showing him whatsoever. Actually, I think I think when it comes to the Bandu, if you notice, he's only revealing himself to Ezra and uh, Kanan. Kanan. Even when Maul showed up, he just was mystically gone okay fine but then why why did he got up then and turn to sabine and s see what's happening i mean that's the thing my problem is why show him if you're not gonna do anything with him in the episode i feel that like it's it's building thing. up to explain him bullshit to me that's bullshit if, 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 if you're going to put him up or something, have a scene of him. Just don't show him and whatnot. I, I can see, like, maybe the interest, like, like maybe he's like, hmm, I, I guess that's what they're trying to go with. But still, it's like, I wish you did something. That's my tiny complaint. But let's continue here. So basically, they all have a meeting about Sabine trying to reconnect with Mandalore and against the fight against Empire, of course, and... You know, this begs the question, what happens to the Mandalorians after the legacy of Mandalore? Because we do not see them at all, only in one scene or, the, you know, in the trailer for the mid-season. Mm -hmm. So basically, this begs the question, do they get wiped out or do they all join the Empire? Uh, from what we learn, the ones who didn't join the Empire got wiped out. And the ones who didn't, who the ones who did join the Empire are just, systematically being wiped out. Yeah, and turn into elite troopers, basically. Yeah. So basically, Kanan gives uh, you know, Sabine a dark saber, and you know, he's just like saying you have to be careful of this. If you know anyone knows you have this, then you'll have to take extra precaution. Mm hmm. So, which I really liked about that scene. So here we get to see Kanan and also Sabine training with a you know sticks what Kanan and Seb made. Yeah, which I thought it was quite kind of funny as well. How they actually didn't make those into training sticks instead of actually using training swords. Yeah, the training sabers, which are a little more than baton, uh, stun batons, basically. Yeah. And I do like it here. Ezra's taking a teaching role here, even through they do it in a way I don't like because they're still poking fun at Ezra, not give him as much credit still. But I'm still liking though, like, hey look, Ezra does know more than you. Maybe you're a good fighter, but he's a bare swordsman still. Or a know? better teacher. Well, well I honestly I think with what, what what they were doing with Ezra is Kanan is 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 trying to is putting a little more trust in Ezra in as well as 
Sabine Sabine might be a, a lot more willing to to listen to someone that is on her level of age wise. And you know, might be more will she opens up a lot more to Ezra than she did she does to any of the other crew, really. She's she's very she's always been that kind of very standoffish with her own real emotions and just always put up that that forced front. And I think that's sort of what Kanan was seeing. So he, he he wanted to since Ezra's like the one where she kind of breaks down a little bit of that front around a lot. He, he gave Ezra a chance to train her, as well as gives Ezra um, more of a role of, of allows him to actually experience what it is to to teach and such. You know, it'll give him a little more of that experience of what a Jedi is to be. Yeah. I'm just a master as well. I'm just I just wish that they stop with the whole like, oh, let's put Ezra down a notch a bit, or let's make fun of Ezra. But I, I understand that we want to keep some humor in here, but. Can we just stop with lots of this dumb humor? That's why I didn't like about lots of season one, to be honest with you. It's, I mean, humor is great. I'm not saying humor is bad. It's just, though, if, if we get to a point of Ezra, he needs... He, if we want to take him more seriously and make him... And get us to make him feel like he has definitely learned more and whatnot, more like the beginning episode from here, you know, where we saw how strength he has, you know, and how much of a leader he can be. You know, so I'm just getting sick of lots of these. Honestly, but, I didn't see any real put down of. Oh, Ezra. I did. I did in this episode. I did, and I did like not. What? What? What was the put down? It's like he he basically owned her in lightsaber combat. Well, still, it's and and here, basically right here, perfect. This scene right here. You know, put him down a bit, and put him down a notch. You know, uh. Making fun of him just a bit. I, I not he not as much. I'm not saying they didn't do it too much, but they, uh, it feels like they still can't get away from that just a bit. I I understand. I understand. It's just my own little nitpick. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just, focusing just, on too much. But oh well. But what I do like about this scene though is showing that showing that um training. Training is definitely more important than little gadgets and whatnot to help you out. If you don't know how to fight with a certain weapon, you will you lose. Actually, what it came what it came down to is is not that she can't fight. She's far more experienced fighter with a I'm lot not of different weapons. Fight. I'm saying though, with certain weapons though, you might be a good fighter and whatnot. But but the same thing with Ray. For example, from Force Awakens, she might be good with a stick, but a lightsaber is a different weapon. She's, so she wasn't even trained in fighting anything. She just brutally punched people with it. It's like what I'm saying is this is this is a girl who was trained in Mandalorian combat. She knows how to use a vibro blade, which is very similar to how how you fight with the lightsaber. But what I'm like, saying is, it's like what this felt like was sort of like a rite of passage, it's like. In a way, he's trying to he's trying to bestow upon her to connect back to her heritage, which she's it's not just told. that though. It's not just uh, it's that too. But but if we're talking about the training scene here, she definitely needs to learn different technique than she did because if she's trying to go against more highly skilled fighters, yes, I, I, I understand. I understand. For, for example, Darth Vader. Mm hmm. Yeah. But the thing was, it was her starting to to, you know, do stuff more outside of the box type of thing, and it's more. It felt more like can try and really. It's like, yeah, you can use all your tricks, but when you're running out of it, you have to you have to rely on your on, on your skills. And the problem is, is, she had so much stuff that she's holding back, and she's really fighting herself nonstop, which is why he just was getting upset with her and basically pushing her and she got really pissed and just all uh, ran off. Mm -hmm. And what I really loved about this scene is how, you know, Kanan says to Sabina, the Jedi won the war in Mandalore and they know all the tricks that the Mandalorians do. So, yeah. As yeah. we see Kanan getting like tied up here, but he already knew that trick. Yep. Yeah. And the thing, the thing is, it's like again, as I was saying, it's just she's relying, she she she's relying too much on her on just basically what she's taught. But it's like 
doesn't is is mainly fighting herself nonstop. And when it came when it comes to this, it's like he's like he's trying to force her to to face whatever she is, not telling them. And he's he's doing it aggressively, like you're you know, everything that she you know that she holds about her family and all that. Mm-hmm. You, you could tell he was trying to force it out of her. He's and that 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 it says a lot about Kanan's character. He's having to grow at learning how to teach different people. Ezra was a very willing learner. With with Sabine, she's very anti learning because she's very regretful of her of her past and her own decisions. Yes. And e- even Hera had to get on his case. Like, look, you 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 got you you, you st- don't keep kitty gloves on her. You gotta you gotta let her. Uh, deal with her 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 problems. Problems. You can't, you can't just put kitty gloves to protect her. She's not a kid. She is a she's a she's a trained warrior. She needs she needs to be able to face them. Mm-hmm. And putting kitty gloves on her is only hurting her because she's she's just going to get more and more rebellious and screw up because of that because she won't face her own her own issues. Yeah. Meanwhile, at the same time, Ezra, again, being the one that can actually connect with Sabine, was sitting there talking with her and everything. And meanwhile, Sabine, I know you don't like that Bindu was there. It was like, Bindu is observing. That's one yeah. thing I like about him. He's observant. And the reason I think that what they're building to is the reason he doesn't reveal himself to anybody but Ezra and Kanan. Uh-huh. I think what, he, what it's building to, he's trying to indoctrinate them into into uh, into the the way of the gray Jedi. I get Walking it. Walking that balance between the dark and the light. Like I said, with the Bendu, I'm not saying it was bad seeing him. I just wish we got more of him. We got a scene with him. If you're going to show him, I get he was a sir, a, you know, looking on it, you know, like like seeing what's happening, you know. Uh, but we only got that one scene of him doing that. It would be nice to see a other scene maybe of him after this has happened or something. Or that's something else. That's basically all I'm just trying to say. Now, here's my other complaint going into here. It's this scene here that we're looking at right now. To me, I did not like... I, I understand what Kanan was doing. It was fine. But to me, it felt like... Uh, Sabine was using more of the dark side way of doing stuff, you know, using anger and frustration. I get it. I know it's not, I know she's not a Jedi, but I wish Kenan would have let a man remark saying, don't let your emotions get to you. That, that wasn't the point of what he was doing. He was I know, trying- I know, but at least a slight comment in there. Just because, just because uh, how much, uh, how much he gets on the case of Ezra going to that i i get it though because he's a jedi but i know no, it's more it's more than that it's but when you, you look at my point though do you see my point though because you in this scene though she i know she get bringing out lots of the stuff that she was holding back and whatnot but how she was doing it too was very aggressive and i felt like kanan as a as a master would have said would have at least said make sure too that when you're fighting that your emotions don't get to you, you know? Or, or even quoting that Obi-Wan quote or a Yoda quote, like, do, do or do not, there is no try. No, 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 that would not work there. No, no, that would be stupid. But um, there's something there just to remind her that that don't bottle up your emotions, but don't let them control your fighting. But here, here's, the, here's the thing during that. What he was doing... Was it's like she she see it's a different know, thing. No 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 I know what he was. Hold on hold on hold on let me let me see. With Ezra, he is a person who will fucking just go off the handle at times if you don't wrangle at him. Her it wasn't that she was turning her anger towards him. It's bottled up inside her. She's turning it in on her, and the only way he can get her to get it out of her to stop torturing herself is force her you know prod her until she finally just breaks down and says it. I understand that, but still, knowing that he's a master, I understand what he's trying to do, and I get that, but I think... Some people it works that way. I I know it does, but I think 
a comment there about not letting your emotions determine your fighting would still be a nice thing. Like a different reminder. I'm glad you got these out. I'm glad you open up, but make sure though you don't let your anger and strong emotions de determine your fighting. You know, de because if you let those emotions get to you, you can mess up and lose because you're not focusing. That's what I'm trying to say as a teacher, as a master. I know any master would have said that afterwards. You know, well, I, 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 praise, I not give praise, on, give praise, but also to give a lesson. And I didn't saw that. And I, and he, and the reason why I won't complain this if he has not done it with Ezra, but he has done it with Ezra before. That's what I'm trying to say as a teaching method. As a learning method. Here's it's the not, thing. It's not, he was it's not a big problem. It's just a little nitpick I have there. That's all I'm just trying to say. Here's the thing, though. Ezra is a different type of person there. He has I to be differently. I'm about but here's here's another thing. You're not you're, you're, you're not seeming to realize. Like he already said this earlier to her, and she kind of flew off the hill. Here is where he's trying to get her to confront it completely. To let it out of her, so she 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 can become a better fire. She is already a focused fire. Knows how to keep her emotions in check when she's fine. Problem is, is she's it wasn't a external fight she was doing. It was an internal fight. I get she's that. perfectly fine with an external fight. Problem is, she was fighting herself so much internally internally that it was she she couldn't keep focus. And that's what he was trying to get her to to stop blaming herself in everything. So in the last in the last scene Sorry. here, uh, Esco, in the last scene here, we get to see Kane and Ezra, and also Fenrao, basically bowing down to Sabine, telling her that we are family, we we'll follow you wherever you go. And basically, their next move is going to be a Mandalore, try and reunite Mandalore with the rebellion, of course. And I don't think it's going to go as well as they think. I don't think so either, and also too, it's not just that, but she has to, uh, you know, reunite with her mother and father. I'm brother as and well. Mother. Yep. Yeah. And somehow I feel what they're building up to is she'll probably be able to get a fraction of her family to to go with her, but I think there's going to be that fraction that that will still favor the empire for what she did. From what I feel like, uh, I feel like the uh, the father will follow her. Well, I was gonna say the mother, but throughout this episode, I feel like the father will follow her. The brother, I don't know yet. I feel like her mother is going to very disown Sabine and still disown her until the end, and still stay with the Empire, maybe, or or she might have an open heart and come back to Sabine. It's def it, it would be one of those two ways, I feel like. Exactly. And also, in the trailer, we get to see Sabine fighting someone on Ice Rank as well in the mid-season trailer. Because I think Ezra as Kanan and I have been like, put in jail or whatever. Well, she has uh, uh, Ezra's. Ezra's. Mm -hmm. And another and person has the dark saber. So she's fighting, I'm guessing, for the right to wield the dark saber. So, so... And most likely what's going to happen is someone at her clan is technically the rightful owner of the Darksaber and to prove that she is truly a leader and truly the main owner of the Darksaber, she has to fight with Ezra's blade and in the manner of, you know, combat, you know, challenge and whatnot to defeat, to claim. You know, how the Mandarins do. It, you know, something I'm wondering... Uh... If her mother wasn't that female uh, uh, Death Watch uh, uh, Mandalorian who watched as uh, when Maul killed uh, Pre uh, Previsla, you know that'd be very very interesting if that is the case. Because that could also be part of what led her to to be the way she was. Oh yeah, and that would be very interesting. I feel like indeed. So now we're going on to the rating. So I'm going to go to Omidon first. Would you like to say your ratings? 
I honestly give this a 10 out of 10. It's a great character development, great progression of what these characters have all gone through and what has made them who they are and why they did it. It's like Sabine, pretty much the one person who understands her type of back uh, history is Hera. She went through the same thing pretty much. Unfortunately, I feel like with Sabine, she's still holding back something like she knows that it's not going to work with her, with her mother or brother or something. Because, like, there we don't know to how much of an extent they... Because here's the thing. She was abandoned by her own family in favor of those who were going to destroy them. And that's why she joined the rebellion to stop the... Even though it distanced her from her own family and she was sort of excommunicated from them. Well, she's see. doing this fight to, to, to protect those that she cares about. It's 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 something it's it's a very hard thing for her to deal with, and at the same time, you're having Ezra being uh, Kanan's giving Ezra more responsibility and like learning how to teach, as well as he trusting him to be to to be able to to communicate more. He's he's given him more of that Jedi type of experience that Ezra needs to center himself. At the same time, we're dealing with Kanan having to learn that he can't teach the just one way he has to he has to really look at how people are and not just like focus one way of thought process because that it doesn't work that way you have to work on who they are to teach he's becoming a better teacher in that sense at the same time you you have you had um oh, bad with the mandalorian guy's name again uh um, Rao. then Rao. You have him trying to connect her, you know, back into her her past. Like it's like, don't worry. He, he, he it's it's also a way of him reaching out. It's like, I have no more ill wills towards you. You you are when when he gives her the the gauntlets there, which are are sort of like a, a kind of rite of passage. Like every bit of Mandalorian armor feels like it's a rite of passage. You know, weaponry and armor and such. And it feels like she is, she, he's really trying to connect with her. In a way, I think he looks at her like a daughter now. It's like someone he can pass on his knowledge and such to. And in, in, in a way, it's also powerful that, that they're explaining. It's like, look, we're, we're your family too, and we will not abandon you no matter what. We're always there for you. Something that she i think in the next few episodes you know they're going to prove it to her you know with you know staying with her something i still feel like she's probably she trusts them but is weary because of what happened to her own biological family abandoning her, her own clan abandoning her she's bought she was by herself for a long time and um, i think i think it's very powerful in, in the way it's it's set up for her character i I know you're not a big fan of her Joker, but I think it's a it's a very important thing the stuff that she's gone through and it also explains something about the empires like they're constantly making newer weapons and better weapons. What and Mandalorians were known for having some of the best armors and weaponry. And not right. to mention they they do had the um uh was the uh the Mandalorian uh iron uh I forget what the iron's called, but uh, it's basically uh, lightsaber resistant and is is a very dense, heavy iron that they produce themselves and know how to work. So it, it does say a lot to maybe how wet how the weapons weapons work. Maybe even the Death Star, in and of itself, was made with some of those components in mind because they did have the. Uh, we did see in Rogue One that uh, what what uh, what drove the the laser were uh, kyber crystals, and it makes it interesting. All right, Patrick, over to you. Okay, two things I want to say before I get into my thoughts. You have to remember Sabine did work for the Empire and was part of the Empire. Just want to say that. Just want to put that out. And also, too, I don't dislike Sabine's character. 
I have problems with some of her character development that we're finally now getting in these new episodes, which I'm happy about. So just want to point that out there. Now, um, with this with, with this episode, I'll give it a eight out of ten still, just because of those nitpicks that I had with the episode, and they're nitpicks. I'm not saying that they destroy that whole episode. They're just a problem to me. That's just it. They're just a problem to me. I just have a problem with with uh, the bandu there and and some of the things they did with Ezra a bit and how they handled the whole thing. Not not the whole thing, the end part with uh, Sabine and Kanan just a little bit, but it's just tiny nitpicks. Other than that, it was a good episode, a great episode, and we got lots of good, good uh uh, story arcing with Sabine, even through it was kind of forced in there. They kind of forced in her backstory a bit, like like oh, let's explain it to you just by her talking about her backstory. I I understand how they did it, and it makes sense. But you have to admit though a bit, it's like it's like okay, let's just explain <laughs> it all at once with just her talking about it. and in movie sense, writing sense. You don't want to do that. That's kind of bad to do that. But for this circumstance and for the TV show format, if we want to get more for backstory without reading tons of books and whatnot, just knowing at least a little hints here and there and whatnot, it was perfectly fine. I'm okay with that. So, yeah, definitely a 8 out of 10. Nick? For me, I'll probably give a 10 out of 10, uh, 10, out of 10 because it was really, really good. It was a good story arc. I really love the character development of Forrest Sabine as well, how we get to learn a wee bit about her backstory, and also, too, how she built the weapons for the Empire, which I really liked about this episode. All right. Cool. Yeah. So, anyway, guys, this has been our review for Star Wars Rebels Season 3, Episode 15, called Trials of a Dark Saber. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment, and also share us on social media with your friends, family, relatives, and your fellow Jedi. So thank you very much for watching, and don't forget, may the Force be with you always.